this definitely falls under the category of not knowing what I was going to be doing when I woke up this morning. Cutting down broken trees is not a normal thing for us to be doing out here. But it's not what was unexpected about today. Later, we're going to be driving up to Battleground, Washington to buy three newborn goats. They just came available on Craigslist, and so it's kind of a spur of the moment decision for us. If you enjoy these videos, please do like, subscribe, and comment. Bottle baby goats and chopping down trees, what's not to like? Happy 4th of July, everybody. Maple trees are incredibly hardy. As you can see, this mangled mess is still trying to put out new branches. Now, I really do want the root system of this tree to continue holding the soil together for this really steep slope. But really, this tree is just waiting to die, either from rot or insects. It's not gonna last very much longer. I really do need to just cut it down to a stump. If any branches do wanna continue growing out of that stump, I'll probably just let it do its thing. Wish me luck. Sorry about the angle of my camera. I was a little too conservative when it came to placing my camera in harm's way. You'll see a little bit better what I'm doing on the next tree. I don't know if that was a perfect cut for felling a tree, but it did fall right where I wanted it to. So I'm happy with it. Look at the split in this tree. This one is obviously a lot bigger than that other one. And it's a little trickier because of that split. Still, it doesn't have really that much weight to it. I think I should be able to drop this tree on my own without any, without any professional help. Let's see how it goes. Small mechanical difficulty. I just had to put the saw chain back on the chainsaw. These two trees are the first substantial ones I've dropped. I'm glad to have been able to start with shortened snags like this rather than tackling a really big one. You first cut a notch in the tree on the side you want it to fall. In this case, it's downhill and aimed not to hit anything. Typically, you would cut in towards that notch from the other side, but the split trunk won't let me do that. I first tried a wedge in the split to see if it wouldn't just fall on its own. When that didn't work, I plunged the chainsaw into the middle of the tree 
to both start the next notch and weaken the back wood that was still holding up that tree. One thing I learned is that I should get a better chainsaw. That went just about as well as I could have hoped. Now let's go get those goats. I guess I do want some milk replacer then since she said that's what she uses. Okay, we can go in and get that right now. We're gonna have to go pretty fast because I don't want them sitting out in the heat. I need to yeah, let me, uh, roll the windows, roll the windows down. down a little. Hi, Bubba. It's just so cute. So cute. Well, this definitely falls under the category of not knowing what I was going to be doing when I woke up this morning. Wendy has been thinking about getting some goats specifically to raise for meat. And today on Craigslist, these three little guys showed up. We're up here in Battleground, Washington, and we just met the, uh, the person who, who owned the goats before here at the parking lot of a Wilco. Wendy's running in to get some milk replacer, so it'll be an easy transition. These are gonna be bottle babies. It's good for them, and this is good for us. We're kind of excited about new baby goats. They're different than what we've had before, they're a cross between Nubian, Boar, and 
I'll have to ask Wendy what the what the last one was. Nubian boar and uh, Kiko, I think. I think I think that's what it is. They'll be a little bit larger, more like uh, indigo size. It'll be fun to watch them grow up, but they are going to be meat goats, so we'll have to try not to get too attached to them. Welcome home, little goats. Wendy's getting their milk replacer ready, and we'll give them their first feeding out here. Oh, you're dripping a little bit of milk there. Got the milk face. <laughs> Make sure it goes in his mouth. Oh, tilt its chin up if it's not doing it like this. Here, maybe you should feed these two. Okay, you can try this one. Keep it in your mouth, Coopers. You're just too wiggly. Too wiggly. Do I need to ask what was your favorite part of today, Wendy? No. Oopsie. <laughs> you come fall. Mm -hmm. Look at those big old legs. Such a cute little goat. Are you getting done? No, I'm done. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Want more? More? Boy, this one's really tugging on the bottle. They kind of look like little puppies at this stage. Look at those big ears. Those big paws. Hooves. <laughs> so is the goal to actually get them to drink all of this milk? Well, I think I've got too much milk, but... Yeah, that'd be like doubling their weight <laughs> in one feeding. The little squeaky noises. Mm -hmm. So you want to say anything about our new goats? Why we're getting them? What you're looking forward to? They are boys. And obviously they're bottle babies. And they are Kiko, four Nubian crosses. And they're just kind of farm homestead kind of goats not registered or anything and what I wanted to do was um, see how we did with raising some meat type goats and um, maybe sell a couple of them when, once they're at weight 
and maybe keep one for our herd to possibly use with indigo. We'll have to see. Um, just so we have a bigger goat that we can um, breed her with and then possibly have more like a meat goat with her children. So her offspring then would be more of a meat goat, but then we would get milk from her. Are you thinking it'll be more profitable to sell goats for meat rather than having registered goats that we would sell as uh, breeding goats? Not necessarily, but it does mean a lot less of paperwork and things like that. I'll have to see how, how it goes. Um, Cause particularly for when you have boy goats, it's hard to sell them unless you have like bucks that people would want to buy for breeding stock. And e even then, you know, I think it's a little bit hard to s sometimes deal with all the bucklings that you get. So this is kind of one of my solution ideas to that for us is to make it so that maybe we can have some funds coming from boy goats and some coming from more of the Nigerians and possibly still a Nubian Nigerian cross but so you're thinking that our Nigerian dwarfs even when they're fully mature, might not be big enough to breed with indigo? I don't know. I, and they should be big enough eventually, but she's a really big sort of goat. And since she is so big, I just feel like this gives us a, another option. I mean, we could always get a Nubian, but I feel like this allows us to do more on less space because we don't have to keep so many goats to make this happen and we can always sell these guys off as as just meat goats and I get to then enjoy having the little ones to raise up because I do like raising the babies so this really is what I'm finding kind of my favorite part is having the babies and making them friendly and that kind of a thing. I like the milking, but Valkyrie was really hard to milk and she's still kind of hard to milk. So I'm thinking that maybe this is a good way to make sure that, that I have maybe a little more of what I want. It's a good experiment anyways. These are our first bottle baby goats. The first that we've had to feed with the bottle. So it'll be more work, but right now it's a lot of fun because they're they're just so cute and eager to be fed. Mostly they seem to be getting it all over their face. <laughs> this little one is the one that doesn't get as much. Hey, you want some? They look like little puppy goats. 